Welcome to another episode of the Bible says this, what say you? Psalms 33 and verse four says, for the word of the Lord is right. My friends, the passage of scripture that I would like to talk to you uh, about today, and by the way, I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr., pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and I'm certainly glad that you have joined us today. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter five and verse 20, it says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The Bible also says in, uh, in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 24, it says, he that saith to the wicked, thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. But to them that rebuketh him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. And lastly, my friends, we also find in the book of Proverbs, the 17th chapter and the 15th verse, he that justifieth the wicked and condemn the just, the same both are an abomination unto the Lord. My friends, we are living in a day where right is being called wrong and wrong is being called right, where the wicked are being justified and the just are being condemned. We're in a day where it seemed like to me the morals of society are being turn, literally turned on their head. And yet Isaiah says this to an entire nation. He said, for people who do this, woe unto you. The word woe there literally indicates an impending doom. America is in a bad place because we live in a day where America is calling, literally calling right wrong and wrong right. We're literally putting darkness for light and light for darkness. We're putting bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We're calling wicked, abominable things courageous and holy positions we are calling judgmental and evil. My friends, I wonder how that did we get here? How did we, how did our nation become a nation where leaders of the nation said things like this? James Kent, 1736 to 1847, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of New York and the head of the Court of Chancery for nine years, considered the premier jurist in the development of legal practice in the United States. He authored the commentaries on American law. In the case, People v. Ruggles, 1811, he rendered the opinion of the court. Here's what he said, quote, the defendant was indicted for that he did wickedly, maliciously, and blasphemously utter with a loud voice publish in the presence and hearing of divers and good Christian people and concerning the Christian religion and of concerning Jesus Christ, he uttered the false, scandalous, malicious, wicked, and blasphemous words following. Quote, Jesus Christ was a bastard, the man said. His mother was a whore. End of quote. In contempt of the Christian religion, the defendant was tried and found guilty, sentenced to be uh, imprisoned for three months and to pay a fine of $500. The quote goes on, whatever strikes at the root of Christianity tends manifestly uh, to the disillusion of civil government. Profane ridicule of Christ or the Holy Scriptures, which are equally treated as blasphemy, are offenses punishable at common law, whether uttered by words or writings, because it tends uh, to corrupt the morals of people and to destroy good order. He went on to say, the people of this state, in common with the people of the, co of the country, profess the general doctrines 
of Christianity as the rule of their faith and practice, nothing could be more injurious to the tender morals of the young than to declare such profanity lawful. The free, equal, and undisturbed enjoyment of religious opinion, whatever it may be, and free and decent discussion on any religious subject is granted and secured, but to revile the religion professed by almost the whole community is an abuse of that right. We are a Christian people and the morality of the country is deeply engrafted upon Christianity and not upon doctrines or worships, worship of those imposters, that is, of other religions. Now notice what Kent said, and, and listen to uh, another quote that I want to do for you quickly here. Congress of the United States of America on March the 27th, 1854, received the report from Mr. Meacham of the House Committee on the Judiciary. He said, at the adoption of the Constitution, every state provide as regularly for the support of the church as for the support of the government. Down to the revolution, every colony did sustain religion in some form. It was deemed particularly proper that the religion of liberty should be upheld by a free people. Had the people during the revolution had a suspicion of any attempt to war against Christianity, that revolution would have been strangled at its cradle. It, Christianity, must be considered as the foundation on which the whole structure rests. Laws will not have preeminence or power without the sanction of religious sentiment, without a form of belief that there is a power above us that will reward our virtue and punish our vices. Let me just read a little more. In this age, there can be no substitute for Christianity. That in its general principles is the great conservative element on which we must rely for the purity and preeminence of free institutions. That was the religion of the founders of the Republic and they expected it to remain the religion of their descendants. There is a very great and prevalent error on this subject in the opinion that those who organized this government did not legislate on religion. He says it, it's an error to assume that Christianity, that religion was not the foundation of the organization or the, or the organizing of our great republic. Congress uh, of the, the Congress of the United States of America, 1854, passed a resolution in the house which declared, now listen to this, the great vital and conservative element of our system is the belief of our people in the pure doctrines and divine truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now isn't that amazing that this was passed into law. This was a resolution that was a, a part of a, a, our Congress in 1854. So we certainly are, my friends, a country that was founded upon religious principles. But my question is, how do we move from here to having a magistrate in jail for standing on Christian principles. Now, my friends, for the last five days, Kim Davies have been uh, in jail, uh, held in contempt of court without bail uh, because she refused to put her signature to same-sex marriages. Now, I just got a report. By the time this airs, hopefully my report is true. Uh, I think it's on the wire from CNN that Kim has been released from jail. 
And if that is true, then praise the Lord, my friends. Thank God is an answer to prayer. We prayed for Kim in our Sunday morning service. We've, we've held her up every day since she's been uh, uh, locked up. Uh, I think it's a, it's a disgrace that this uh, little brave woman of God w- was put in jail in the first place uh, for upholding uh, her religious beliefs. Now, now, my friends, I want to talk to you because some attacks that's been waged at this young lady, it is amazing. And I'm going to even talk to you, uh, those of you who argue, well, she, she has a job to do. She has a job to perform. And if she uh, does not perform the law and the job, uh, the, the requirements of her duty, that uh, no special consideration should be made for her and that she should, should resign. You know, they can't fire her. She's an elected official. So there are those who says, well, she just should resign. And my question is, do we want to lose good people who are in office simply because no allowances are made for their religious beliefs when the truth is that, uh, that considerations and allowances are made for government officials, elected officials, people who work in corporate America, people who hold certain jobs all the time so as to come to a happy medium. Since this decision was not a decision that was put to the vote of the people, it was not a decision that was left up to the states, it was a decision made by the Supreme Court with no alliances whatsoever, they set it up for these battles to take place. And America has gone from being a country that held the religion that made this country great, uh, a country that held it in, in great respect. We honored Christianity. We love Christianity to being a country now that put people in jail and ridicule people for standing on their Christian beliefs. Now, I have some things that I want to talk to you about, and I want to see if you agree with the Bible. I've read to you where Isaiah says, woe be unto them that put uh, darkness for light and light for darkness, good for evil and evil for good, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Uh, Proverbs says, he that justifieth the wicked and condemned, condemned the just, both are an abomination in the sight of the Lord. Now, my friends, this is what the Bible says. My question to you is, what say you?